Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now this morning we are in Ballymoney Cemetery in Northern Ireland and we have come to find the final race to place of a gentleman by the name of Wilfred Diebel Seward. Now he was an actual steward on the RMS Titanic. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him real soon. But there's a bit of a question today. Was this man a hero or was this man a bit of a yellow belly? That's for you to decide. I'm going to tell you his story real soon and you let me know what you think on the subject. Now, don't forget if you like the video today, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free and doesn't cost you a thing. And of course, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notified when more videos come out. And most importantly, I want to hear your views on this story. I want you to leave your comments down below and let me know what you think about Wilfred Diebel Seaward. I'll tell you a little bit more about him now. Mr. Wilfred Diebel Seward was born in Shoreditch, London, England on the 5th of March 1887. He was the son of William Henry Seward, 1865 to 1928, and Alicia Louisa Trout, 26th of March, 1865 to 1954. His father was from Shoreditch and his mother was a native of Cork City, Ireland. The couple married on the 25th of September, 1884. The family as a whole appear to have lived in various locations over the years, including Birkenhead, Liverpool, Essex and Tottenham. Wilfred first appears on the 1891 census living with his mother and brother, Colonel William, at 40 Parkhurst Road, Tottenham. But his father was absent at the time. On the 1901 census, Wilfred and his father, described as a wine agent, are listed as visitors at an address in Toxyth Park, Liverpool. Wilfred, aged 14, was already described as a ship's steward. The earliest known record of him was serving aboard a ship in June 1903 when he was a waiter aboard the Saxonia and he then stated his local address as one in New Brighton, Cheshire. His ship just prior to that was listed as the Ivernia. By the time of the 1911 census, Wilfred's family are living at 3 Ebenezer Road, Liverpool and his father was described as a theatrical agent. Wilfred and his brother William are not listed at this address but at 5 Shirley Road, Southampton and both are described as ship's stewards. Also lodging at this address were future Titanic crewmen, stewards Ernest Hamilton and Frank Morris. Seward, who was unmarried, had transferred from the Olympic and was on board the Titanic for her trip from Belfast to Southampton, although he does not appear to have signed on for the trip. When he did eventually sign on to the Titanic on the 4th of April 1912, he gave his local address as 5 Shirley Road, Southampton. As Chief Pantry Steward, he could expect monthly wages of £4.10. shillings. Called to testify at the British Inquiry into the sinking on day 15, of which he received expenses of £10.08, shillings, Seward's account was tame. He stated at the time of the crash he was in his bunk and got up but got back into his bunk again and went to sleep. He rose again after a time when the second steward came by ordering all men up on deck. Before complying, steward went to the pantry to check on lifeboat list before assisting passengers into their lifeboats. He first went to boat 5 and then to his assigned boat, lifeboat 3 which he entered and estimated to be filled with between 50 and 60 people, including around 14 other crew members, which were made up of seamen, four, and firemen, ten. He also related the reluctance of some of the passengers to leave. In another and much more dramatic account, he stated that his lifeboat capsized and he spent hours in the water. Upon returning to Britain and providing evidence of the British inquiry, Seward returned to sea. Two years later, on the 29th of August 1914, Wilfred enlisted in the 10th Scottish Battalion, the King's Liverpool Regiment. On the 1st of November, he landed in France, only to be discharged and sent home four weeks later. His invalidity certificate records that he was suffering from rheumatism and reports that this man was on board the Titanic when she went down. He was in the water for two and a half hours. Causation of disability, immersion at sinking of the Titanic. His return home was reported in the press. 
Three gallant lads, news has been received that Private Fred Stewart of the Liverpool Regiment, whose father lives in White Rock Street, Liverpool, was wounded in the recent big push. His eldest brother, Wilfred, who is in the Liverpool Scottish, a survivor of the Titanic, has been invalided home owing to his frostbite contracted in the trenches at Christmas 1914, where he went through the early fighting. Another brother, Arthur, 18 years of age, in September next, has been out on the front line for 10 months with the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders and taken part in all of their successful charges, Liverpool Daily Post, 24th of July 1916. Wilfred therefore returned to civilian sea duty, serving on various ships in the merchant fleet during both world wars. On the 14th of August 1917, Wilfred was married in Hornsey Road Methodist Chapel, Islington, to Lilia Marion Box. He was described as a baker, works manager, and his address was stated as 112 New Warwick Road, New Southgate, London. His wife Lilia, a native of Bromley, was the daughter of Josiah James Box, a railway worker and the former Mary Butcher. Wilfred and Lilia had two children, Doris, born 1920, and Peter James, born 1926, and they lived in the Islington area of London for a number of years, before living in the New Forest, Hampshire, and later Southampton. His daughter Doris related an amusing story about her father's extended absences from, the ho from home whilst at sea. She and her fiancé, Thomas Patterson of Doeg County Antrim, had written to him asking for his permission to marry. The letter finally arrived with him 18 months after the wedding had taken place. Seward worked aboard the Majestic in the 1920s and the Olympic in the latter half of the decade. During the 1930s, he began a long association with the Queen Mary. In 1945, he was a pantry steward above the Monarch of Bermuda, operating between India and Liverpool. The following year, he was working aboard the Queen Elizabeth as an assistant pantry steward, immigration records describing him as standing at 5 foot 10, weighing 140 pounds. He later returned to the Queen Mary, where he spent the rest of his seagoing career and was shown serving aboard her as night pantryman into 1953. He retired that same year and continued to work as a patrol officer aboard Queen Mary at Southampton Docks. In a move to be closer to their daughter, Doris, who lived in Ballymoney, County Antrim, Northern Ireland, and also to get Wilfred away from his beloved ships in Southampton and for a quieter life over Christmas 1956, retiree Wilfred and his wife Lilia decided to move to Northern Ireland. Wilfred Seward died in Ballymoney on the 12th of December 1963, aged 76, and he was buried in Ballymoney Borough Council Cemetery. When his wife Lydia died on the 8th of December 1967, she was buried with him. Their resting place lay unmarked until April 2013, when through the efforts of the Ballymoney Museum and local historians, a headstone was erected. His son Peter died in Hampshire in 2007. So there's all the information there on Wilfred Diebel Seaward. Now don't forget, I want you to make up your mind on this one. What do you think about this guy? Do you think he's a hero? Or do you think he had a little bit of self-preservation going on here aboard the RMS Titanic? I'm gonna leave that for you guys to decide. Anyway, I've been having a good look around this beautiful place. And do you know what? I think I found it. So here we have the final resting place of Wilfred Diebel Seaward. And no matter what you think, this man was on RMS Titanic. A lot of people lost their lives that night and a lot of people went through a lot of trauma after that event. This man went on to serve on board other ocean liners after that fateful night. So we've got to say thank you for doing your bit, Wilfred. Bless you and what you went through that evening, no one should have gone through whatsoever. So there we have the final resting place on Wilfred Diebel Seaward. Like I said earlier, it's down to you to decide of what you thought of that man's actions on that evening. But what we can't take away 
was the traumatic event that he went through on that night on board the RMS Titanic and what he went on to do in terms of serving at sea after that night. Don't forget if you like the video today please give it a thumbs up if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel and leave your comments down below it's really important I want to know your thoughts on Wilfred and uh, I will see you all on the next one take it easy. After reviewing Wilfred's case, there were reports that he was somewhat of a coward, but having looked further into it, he was far from a coward. He helped people aboard the Titanic get into lifeboats. However, some claimed that he shouldn't been on board one himself and should have stayed on the actual ship. Then he went on to serve in the First World War and later onto other seagoing vessels during both wars. For that, we must salute him.